What do we understand if you hear the word stimming? It simply means self-stimulating behavior. Any kind of repetitive movements or sounds that are produced are part of stimming. So it applies to everyone like nail biting, twirling of your hair, drumming your fingers on the table, shaking your legs. But what usually happens is if we feel or somebody interrupts us that this is disturbing them, we tend to stop it. Why does it become problematic then? When it goes so out of control that it becomes unacceptable socially and it might turn harmful to the person or to others. And that is what is observed in children having autism. How does a child usually show these stimming behaviors? By hand flapping, rocking uncontrollably, spinning themselves, jumping, walking on tiptoes, producing some kind of words or sounds repetitively, maybe even staring on moving objects like spinning wheels, sniffing objects, anything can be considered stimming. But their social awareness is so low that it will not stop until their anxiety goes down. But this stimming becomes really harmful when the behaviors go to head banging, scratching their skin that it starts to bleed, pinching, swallowing inedible items. That is when you really feel like you should intervene. Before we understand how to control these behaviors, we need to know when and why stimming happens. Usually children on the autism spectrum tend to have some kind of obsession with objects and they find it very difficult to stop that behavior. And that's why it goes for hours on. The sensory load is either too much or too less, which is overstimulation or understimulation. The environment is new for them and they're finding it difficult to cope up with it. Their anxiety is very high in relation to people, objects, environment. A general irritability in the person, some kind of communication problem because of which they are not able to communicate what they want or what they do not want, or they are simply not interested in an activity, they are bored of it. Now, what to do? First of all, always remove the trigger by which the child is showing these behaviors. The environment should be very, very calm. Secondly, Keep a routine for the child and always prepare the child for any kind of change that might happen to the environment, to the routine. Also try to change the behavior of the child to a more socially appropriate, that is a non-harmful behavior. If you feel that certain stimming activities are okay, even if they are done socially, let them be. Like simple running in the child, it's okay if the child is running. Just try to reduce the duration for which they are allowed to run. Most important fourth point, try to keep yourself calm. The more anger, aggression, shouting, punishment you try to show towards the child, the more the child is going to increase these behaviors. And finally, ignore if you feel this behavior is safe. Reinforce it if it can be changed and any time that the child changes the behavior on their own or has agreed with you to change the behavior, always reward them and try to turn them into non-harmful behaviors rather than trying to stop them entirely because that is only going to increase their anxiety and they might stop one behavior but then resort to some other one. The more you accept the child and let them reduce their anxiety on their own, you are only going to help with the self-esteem of the child. What I always emphasize is taking professional help wherever there is required. So use of behavior therapy, use of sensory diet. I will leave the link for my sensory diet video where I've explained how to create sensory diets for children to calm them down. And of course, recommendation of medications from your pediatrician. Let me know how important and informative this video was for you. Any other problems that you want me addressed on this channel and we'll meet again. Bye.